Hello world, it's Austin. Let's talk about being transgender and Christian. This past weekend I attended the Wild Goose Festival in Hot Springs, North Carolina, and I wanted to show you a little bit of what I experienced. The Wild Goose Festival is basically a gathering of a bunch of Christian spiritual misfits. A ton of people come to camp out together in the middle of the Smoky Mountains for four days, singing, teaching, learning, and listening. I went this year because I was co-leading a workshop on in-between spaces and identities, but I also wanted a chance to hear some of the other wonderful speakers that were present. I attended workshops on the importance of lament for individuals and communities experiencing violence, and then I went to a service of lament which held up the names of people of color, trans folks, and Syrian refugees who have been murdered and ignored over the past year. Of all the things I experienced at Wild Goose, the most powerful moment was watching the pictures of trans folks being nailed up on a closed door, and then seeing Nanette Banks from McCormick Seminary turn that door on its side and make it a table on which she served communion. All closed doors can become open tables. I heard a lot of powerful stories at Wild Goose. I heard Ana Gelsi Velasco Sanchez talk about reclaiming her name as an act of decolonization. I heard Kenji Kuramitsu, Sissy Ali, and Sue Ann Shia talking about their experiences as people with Japanese, Chinese, and Taiwanese backgrounds in the U.S. I heard Mia Walker talk about the struggles she faces as a black woman who had been incarcerated and the need for a complete overhaul of our prison system. I also attended two trans-specific workshops, one led by Gwen Fry on the experiences of transgender folks in the Episcopal Church, and one panel which included the wonderful Paula Williams on creating trans-friendly church environments. I'm incredibly grateful for the work of both of those two women. I have to say, though, that I found a profound discomfort about one particular thing about this conference, and that was the problem of accessibility. Despite the fact that about a third of the workshops there were led by people of color, 95% of the attendees were white. From what I gathered from the folks I talked to, this was largely because people of color didn't feel safe driving an hour into the mountains of North Carolina to a tiny rural town with no cell service. I have to be honest, I was pretty terrified myself as a trans person, and I know other trans and visibly queer folks who said they would have gone had the festival been held anywhere else. So what I want to ask other Christians is this. Are you paying attention to the accessibility of your events? Are you creating a space where all people are safe, whether they're LGBTQ or Black or Latinx or Asian, hearing impaired, mobility impaired, autistic, or a member of any other marginalized group? Are you making intentional space for the full body of Christ? And if not, I hope you'll ask yourself in your community, why? Overall, though, I learned a lot from the courageous people who made that trek into the mountains this year. Even though the location was daunting, once I got there, I saw a Christian community that welcomed trans folks to the table, even if they may not have been sure how they felt about gender identity issues personally. I saw a group of Christians who realized that God's table doesn't belong to them, and that they don't get to choose who's welcome, and that's a pretty awesome thing in a country that's as polarized and stubborn as the USA is right now. I'm so thankful for the new friends I made and the old friends I saw again, and I'm thankful for the hope God instilled in me here. That's what I took away from this festival, that even when all I can see is what still needs to be done and the to-do list of things that have to be fixed, I recognize at the same time that God is doing a new thing in the world. In the faces of the people I talked with, especially the people with marginalized identities, I saw the seeds of justice and mercy just beginning to burst through the parched soil. I can't wait to see the beautiful flowers and tall oak trees that we're becoming. I'll see you next Wednesday, everybody. Peace.